1969, the EIA developed and introduced the RS-232 interface standard. This standard defined the electrical and mechanical details of the interface for the serial transfer of characters between data terminal equipment such as printers and computers to data communication equipment such as modems. This standard left a lot of flexibility open to the designer of the hardware regarding the rules of data exchange. As mentioned earlier, older hardware used extra connections to allow hardware handshaking. This isn't normally required with modern microprocessor-based devices such as the GE Multilin protective relays, and so we will only focus on the transmitting and receiving of signals during our discussion of the RS-232 standard. The transmitter of one device is connected to the receiver of the other while the signal commons are connected directly together. The transmitter produces a voltage on its transmit pin with respect to its local signal common. The receiver detects and compares that voltage with its local signal common. For the receiver, a logic 1 is considered to be from minus 3 volts to minus 25 volts, while a logic 0 is between plus 3 and plus 25 volts. An undefined signal is above minus 3 volts and below plus 3 volts. It will take some time for the transmitter's output to swing from plus 25 volts to minus 25 volts. This delay is called the slew rate and is one of the factors that limit the maximum transmission rate. RS-232 is susceptible to noise at higher baud rates. The signal common tends to be capacity or directly coupled to ground, while the receive wire is connected to the receiver high impedance input. This conductor acts as a big antenna. The longer the conductor, the higher the probability that electromagnetic lines of radiation from sources such as a motor start can induce a voltage on this wire. This could superimpose a voltage that changes a logic 1 voltage level to a logic 0 voltage level or vice versa. Hence, this type of communications link is only considered reliable over relatively short distances, approximately 15 meters or less, at lower baud rates, 19.2 kilobits per second or less. The RS-423 standard is similar to the RS-232, but with the following improvements. A logic 1 is between minus 3.6 to 6 volts DC, and a logic 0 is between plus 3.6 to 6 volts DC. This reduction in the magnitude of voltage range allows the transmission of data at higher rates. The other improvement is that the transmitter's current rating has been increased to permit up to 10 receivers. The result is that RS-423 permits reliable communication up to 1,200 meters with data rates of up to 100 kilobits per second. The objective of this lab is to establish an RS-232 LAN connection to a GE Multilin protective relay. The equipment required for this lab is as follows. One GE Multilin SR protective relay, a computer with an RS-232 serial port and loaded with either the SR or UR configuration software, and a serial cable configured for either 9-pin or 25-pin computer ports. We'll begin by connecting the cable between the RS-232 serial port of the computer and the front RS-232 port of the GE Multilin relay. The first step in using the setup program is to configure the communications to allow us to talk to the relay. We will do this by selecting the device setup button located above the online window on the left side of the screen. In the window that appears, you will see the panel on the left hand side showing the text, please add a site. This indicates that no sites or devices have been set up for communications. First, we need to add the site that will contain the relay. Press the Add Site button found at the top of the window. A new site will be added with the default name, New Site 1. To change the name of the site, click on the Site Name field and type in a new name. Next, we will add all of the devices that we want to be found in that site. Highlight our site by clicking on it and press the Add Device button. Two things should now have occurred. The name of our site would have changed and a new device will be added to the site with a default name, New Device 1. We now need to configure that newly created device. In the panel on the right, click on the Device Name field. Type in a new name that describes that relay. Open the pull-down menu. Since we are configuring the software to communicate to the front serial port, we will select Serial from the menu. The Modbus slave address entry is used to identify which slave device we want the software to communicate to on a LAN which supports multiple slave devices. The front port ignores the slave address. 
For this reason, we can leave the Modbus slave address to the default of 1. In the COM port field, select the communication port of your computer that the serial cable is connected to. The COM port that we are using is COM1. Therefore, we will leave this at the default. The baud rate is user programmable. In this example, we will set it to 19,200. The order code and firmware can be read from the relay itself to fill in the last two fields. Press the Read Order Code button. Press the OK button. You have now configured the software to communicate to an SR relay. In the following steps, we will show you how to configure the URPC program to communicate with the UR relay over an RS-232 serial connection. Before we can communicate with the relay, we must first connect a serial cable from a communication port on your computer to the front panel RS-232 port on your UR. Start up the URPC program and take a look at the online window. The online window is where you select which URs you want to communicate with and select which settings you wish to change. Currently, there are no relays configured in this window. To add a UR device to your online window, press the Device Setup button. In the window that appears, you will see the panel on the left-hand side showing the text, Please Add a Site. This indicates that no sites or devices have been set up for communications. First, we need to add the site that will contain our UR. Press the Add Site button found at the top of the window. A new site will be added with the default name, New Site 1. To change the name of the site, click on the Site Name field and type in a new name. For our example, we will type in Sub 1 to represent Substation 1. Next, we will add all of the devices that we want to be found in that site. Highlight our site by clicking on it and press the Add Device button. Two things should now have occurred. The name of our site will have changed to Sub 1, and a new device will be added to the site with the default name New Device 1. We now need to configure that newly created device. In the panel on the right, click on the Device Name field. Type in a new name that describes that relay. For our example, we will type in the name F60. In the Interface field, open the pull-down menu. Since we are configuring the software to communicate to the front serial port, we will select Serial from the menu. The Modbus slave address entry is used to identify which slave device we want the software to communicate to on a LAN which supports multiple slave devices. The front port ignores the slave address. For this reason, we can leave the Modbus slave address to the default of 1. In the COM port field, select the communication port of your computer that the serial cable is connected to. The COM port that we are using is COM1. Therefore, we will leave this at the default. As mentioned before, the baud rate of the front panel is always 19,200 bits per second, so select 19,200 from the baud rate pull-down menu. The order code and firmware version of your UR can be read from the relay itself to fill in the last two fields. Press the Read Order Code button, and URPC will automatically retrieve this information and enter it in the appropriate fields. Press the OK button. In the online menu window, you will now see that a site called Sub1 has been added to the menu. Expand this menu by double-clicking on Sub1. You will now see a listing of the device called F60 that we created in the previous steps. Double-click on F60 to further expand this device, and you will see a menu tree that allows you to configure and monitor all of the functions of your UR. You have now completed configuring URPC to communicate with a universal relay over the RS-232 serial connection. The next physical standard we will look at is RS-485. Up to 32 devices are connected together in parallel, or daisy-chained, using a two-conductor cable that is terminated at either end in the characteristic impedance of the cable. It's important to correctly terminate the cables to ensure data is received error-free. It's left up to the device manufacturer to specify how the cables are terminated. Each cable in the LAN is referred to as a segment, with the maximum segment length being 4,000 feet or 1,200 meters. The conductors are at no electrical potential, meaning they are not connected in any way to ground or signal common. A common term used to describe this is to say that the conductors are electrically floating. Let's look at the connection of several GE Multilin relays and a computer to an RS-485 LAN. 
Note that for this example, the recommended cable, Belden 9841, is terminated at each end with a series network. As mentioned before, it's important to correctly terminate the cables to ensure data is received error-free. This series network consists of a 120-ohm resistor and a 1 nanofarad capacitor. The computer's RS-232 port should be converted to RS-485 with an optically isolated RS-232 to RS-485 converter such as the GE Multilin F-485. It's important to electrically isolate all devices from each other to reduce potential equipment damage. The transmitter, often referred to as a driver, has three states, logic 1 or high, logic 0 or low, and the high impedance state, where electrically it would appear as if the driver isn't connected to the segment. The transmitting driver induces a voltage difference between the two conductors. A logic 1 can range from minus 1.5 to minus 6 volts, while a logic 0 can range from plus 1.5 to plus 6 volts. The protocol or language used by the devices on the RS-485 LAN will ensure that only one device's driver is active at any time. The receivers measure the voltage difference between these two conductors. As long as the difference is greater than 200 millivolts, the receiver can determine if a logic 1 or a logic 0 is being transmitted. Given that the two conductors are in the same cable, they'll be in close proximity to each other. If a voltage is induced in one of the conductors, due to electromagnetic radiation, a voltage of the same magnitude will be induced in the second conductor. The voltage difference between the two conductors will, however, remain the same. Since the receiver works by detecting the potential difference between the two conductors, in theory, the receiver will still be able to receive the data. This can be imagined as the logic 1 and logic 0 bit states of each character riding on top of the noise signal. This allows RS-485 communication LANs to communicate successfully at higher baud rates and longer distances than can be accomplished with RS-232 or RS-423 LANs. There are many circumstances under which it is highly recommended that sections of the RS-485 LAN be isolated from each other to provide reliable operation. As mentioned before, isolation is important for reducing potential damage to equipment and ensuring data is received error-free. Three of the most common situations where isolation is highly recommended are when sections of the LAN are situated on different ground planes, as may be the case if sections of the LAN were located in different buildings, when there is a long distance between groupings or clusters of RS-485 devices, and when more than 32 devices must be located on a single RS-485 LAN. By using two GE Multilin F-485 converters, the required isolation can be achieved. Both F-485 converters are configured to convert the signals between RS-485 and fiber. The fiber optic cable, being an insulator, provides the necessary isolation. Before proceeding further, this is a good point to examine the GE Multilin F-485 converter. The GE Multilin F-485 is a self-contained device for the conversion of signals between RS-232, RS-485, and fiber optic LANs. The conversion type and baud rate are configured via dip switches. The F485 converter uses the data on the serial port to determine direction, and therefore requires no hardware handshaking signals from the computer. The F485 converter can be powered via the supplied power adapter, or by the connection of an external isolated 9-volt AC-DC power supply to the power supply terminals located at the back of the case. As stated earlier, the converter box is configured via two internal dip switch banks which are accessible by removing the cover of the converter. The designator for each switch is clearly marked on the printed circuit board. Switches A1 through A7 are used to set the baud rate. Switch A8 determines if pin 2 or pin 3 is the transmit or receive data line. Switches B1 through B6 are used to select the conversion type. A common requirement is the need to set up a network such that multiple GE Multilin relays can be monitored from one location. The objective of this lab is to demonstrate how to set up an RS-485 LAN between multiple GE Multilin SR-469 relays and a computer running GE Multilin's EnerVista setup software. It will be assumed that the student has already been trained on the GE Multilin SR-469 relay and the EnerVista software. The following equipment will be required for this demonstration lab exercise. At least one SR-469 relay, we'll use two SR-469 relays, 
a computer preloaded with the Enervista SR469 setup software, a 9-pin cable, and two 3-meter lengths of Belden 9841 cable. Since our computer serial port is RS-232, we'll require a GE Multilin F485 converter to allow the computer's RS-232 port and the RS-485 LAN to interface. Use both of the 3-meter lengths of Belden 9841 cable to connect the F485 and the SR469's RS-485 port 1 as shown. Install a series network consisting of a 120-ohm resistor and one nanofarad capacitor at each end of the LAN to provide the terminations. Using the SR469 keypad, configure communication port 1 of both relays for a baud rate of 19,200, 8 data bits, no parity, and one stop bit. Remove the top cover from the F485. To configure the F485 for 19,200 baud, DTE, and RS-232 to RS-485 conversion, set DIP switches A5, B2, and B4 on. Connect the serial cable between the computer and the F485 as shown. This section will guide you through the process of setting up a 469 LAN with the Enervista 469 setup software. The first step in using the setup program is to configure the communications to allow us to talk to the relay. We will do this by selecting the device setup button located above the online window on the left side of the screen. In the window that appears, you will see the panel on the left hand side showing the text, please add a site. This indicates that no sites or devices have been set up for communications. First, we need to add the site that will contain the relay. Press the Add Site button found at the top of the window. A new site will be added with the default name, New Site 1. To change the name of the site, click on the Site Name field and type in a new name. Next, we will add all of the devices that we want to be found in that site. Highlight our site by clicking on it and press the Add Device button. Two things should now have occurred. The name of our site would have changed and a new device will be added to the site with a default name, New Device 1. We now need to configure that newly created device. In the panel on the right, click on the Device Name field. Type in a new name that describes that relay. Open the pull-down menu. Because we are configuring to communicate with an RS-232 serial cable, we will select Serial from the menu. Several new fields will appear in the area below. The Modbus slave address is used to identify specific devices for communicating on the network. In the COM port field, select the communication port of your computer that the serial cable is connected to. The COM port that we are using is COM1, therefore we will leave this at the default. The baud rate has been set to 9600. The order code and firmware version can be read from the relay itself to fill in the last two fields. Press the Read Order Code button. Press the OK button. Once you have successfully repeated this procedure for the 469 with slave address number 2, you have successfully completed the setup of the RS-485 network, allowing you to configure, monitor, or troubleshoot either SR-469 at the computer via the RS-485 network. This completes the lab exercise. The RS-422 standard was introduced in the early 70s and is older than the RS-485 standard. Like RS-485, it is a differential system using two conductors. The major differences between RS-422 and RS-485 are as follows. Only one transmitter or driver is permitted on the network. However, there are many RS-422-like LANs that break this rule. Up to 10 line receivers are permitted on the LAN. The driver's output for a logic 1 is between minus 2 to minus 6 volts DC, while a logic 0 is between plus 2 to plus 6 volts DC. As with RS-485, in an RS-422 LAN, the receivers measure the voltage difference between the two conductors, and as long as the magnitude of the signal is greater than 200 millivolts, the receiver can determine if a logic 1 or a logic 0 is being transmitted. The original intent of this LAN was to provide a simplex connection from a master to up to 10 slaves. Having said this, prior to the release of RS-485, there were many RS-422-like LANs developed by various vendors that allowed multiple transmitters and half-duplex operation, 